Thank you all for coming. Last day of the convention, Bowerman tonight. Hope you're all excited about that. We are. Very excited about our next session here. Um, my name is Howard Wilman. I'm with the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. And before we introduce our speakers, could I ask you all, if you haven't already, please silence your, your phones. Thank you much. Uh, we're excited about the next speakers because it's part of our, uh, our newest partner. It's our technology partner, Athletic Net. Um, today we have Kim Modalewski and Ben Thomas from Athletic Net, and they will bring you Supercharge Your Me with the Athletic Suite, Athletic Net, Run Me, Athletic Live, and more. So let's give a warm welcome to Kim and Ben. Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ben Thomas. I'm the director of live results at Athletic, as well as the creator of Athletic Live. And as Howard mentioned, joining me today is Kim Modaleski, Athletic's event partnership director. We are thrilled to now be the exclusive technology partner for the US TFCCCA. And we're thankful for the opportunity to present to you today about what our company can offer to the collegiate arena. The outpouring of support we've received from timers, meet directors, facilities, and coaches has been amazing. And we're very grateful for the positive reception. We're very excited to show how our partnership can improve the collegiate meet experience for this season and beyond. I know this partnership has raised a number of questions. Our number one job this week is to listen and to answer them. We've created a frequently asked questions page that answers the most common ones that we've received over the past month. Uh, scanning that QR code will bring you to that page, uh, or you can go to live.tf slash college. And it will also contain all the links that we referenced today. So if you want to go back and take a look at something, it'll be on that page. Or of course, you can reach out to us. The main questions we've heard are, can I do registration on Athletic for my college meets? How much does it cost? And why should I change? Uh, yes, you can do college meet registration on Athletic. Um, entries are free, as they always have been on Athletic. And Kim will address some of the benefits of moving registration to Athletic in a few minutes. In the months since releasing the news of our partnership with the USTFCCCA, our team has worked around the clock to help transition college meets of all sizes to Athletic Net registration. Institutions and facilities such as Arkansas, University of Washington, LSU, and others are updating their meet info this week to open up their meet registrations on Athletic. If you have any questions about how you can do that as well, please come talk to us. Over the next hour, we'll look at the technology that Athletic can bring to collegiate programs and how it can make a positive impact on your meets. Everything we talk about can be done by a coach who's timing their own meets or by a timing company that you've hired. We'll give an overview of the three main parts of the Athletic Suite. While all these features are most powerful when used together, uh, it's possible to use each item a la carte based on what makes the most sense for your program. Kim will discuss the Athletic Net side of things, uh, including real-time performance list updates, how easy it is to make entries on Athletic, and our payout and invoicing system. Then I'll give a brief demo of RunMeet, our cloud-based meet management system, and go over a few features of Athletic Live, including how real-time performances show up on the live results, race and field videos, and our field results, physical scoreboard, and awards management companion apps. We're gonna keep it pretty high level as each of these topics could easily be a session in themselves. Um, and we'll be happy to take some questions if there's time at the end. And if you'd like to discuss any of these features in depth, please reach out to us. And with that, I'll hand it over to Kim to talk about athletic.net. joining us today. I really appreciate that you've chosen to spend one of your last sessions with us so that we can take a few moments to introduce you to athletic.net and the athletic suite. Uh, and I'm just excited to take this opportunity to familiarize you with the different tools that we have available for you. 
Today you'll have the opportunity to learn about how to take advantage of these tools so that you can enhance meets for yourself, for your athletes that are attending and participating in the meet, for coaches that are involved in the meet, and often not mentioned spectators who will be a part of observing and appreciating the meet that you're putting on. So imagine using one platform, one source, one login to manage the majority of all of your digital event needs and digital management needs for your event. What would this look like for you? This starts with entry collection that is very smooth and it references and resources the most robust athlete database available. Entry fee collection funneled straight to your team's bank account that you choose with the frequency of payouts as often as you would like. Meet invitation and email systems that allow you to communicate all of your meet information within that same system without having to use an outside source. Outside source. The option to use an entry management system for your invitationals and larger meets if you need to, along with a notification system when you do change the status of an entry, that it works with just the click of a button. A built-in meet management software option that is literally one click away from your entries page that dovetails seamlessly with the entries that you have taken through athletic.net. A cutting edge live results platform that captures every event the second it happens, every time an athlete crosses the finish line, every throw, every jump, every field event. If you choose race videos and field event videos, and all the while feeding the rankings in a real time perspective where the folks that are watching the live events site are able to see the events as they happen. This is what it looks like when you use one ecosystem for all of your event management needs. And lastly, but not least, in fact, I actually think it should be number one, is really an often undiscussed element, and that is our support staff. In my opinion, the most important part of using a platform is the support that you receive as you are trying to use that platform. And we want you to know that we have superior sports staff, so specifically hired to cater to the college atmosphere and to the college environment. So before you do anything else, I'd like you to take down our direct college support link, and it is college at athletic.net. So I'm gonna jump out of this presentation, PowerPoint, I should say, and jump into our actual athletic.net site because in my opinion, it really is the best resource to show you how we work. So while we're on the topic of support, I wanted to point out that we have a wealth of help documents that really is the first place that I would suggest that you start as you consider using the athletic suite of options. This is literally just support.athletic.net. So that is the difference between a dot and an app. You have your support with the app, you have your actual support and help document site with the dot. So please make note of support.athletic.net. And I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of different sections that are definitely relevant to you. We have a college specific help section that has a number of different documents that will directly uh, relate to your needs as a college meet director. And then just as important, we have a very robust uh, hosting and event section with 72 different documents that will walk you through things such as setting up a meet, uh, all kinds of tutorials about using RunMeet, our meet management software, and a wealth of other documents that I will definitely not take the time to go through with you today, but just wanted to point out that it is definitely a resource for you. So now I'd like to shift a bit and focus on the process of actually taking entries. So to be clear, facilitating entry collection is an entirely different step than uploading your results, which is required on both Keepers and athletic.net. But it is your choice to decide where you would like to collect entries, and we would like to suggest that you consider athletic.net. So we have a very uh, specific help document that I think all of you uh, should take a moment to look through, and it will walk you through what the process is to collect entries on athletic.net. It'll answer all types of questions for you, uh, including how to download rosters from Direct Athletics, which is one of the steps that is required. And it will just walk you through everything that you need to do as you consider facilitating entries on athletic.net. Another very commonly asked question about facilitating entries on our platform is the financial element of it. As Ben mentioned, there is no charge to collect entries, but if you're running an invitational or a fundraising event or some sort of an event where you would like to charge per entry, then we absolutely offer that option. 
one of the ways that we funnel those fees, as I referenced in my introduction, is that we use a company called Stripe, which is a third-party fee collection site. You can link Stripe to any bank account you like. It's a one-time process, and then that account is linked to your athletic.net account, and you'll be able to link that to any meet that you would like to do in the future. Once you have done that, then you can choose the frequency of your payouts. It could be daily, weekly, monthly, or you can push pause and choose to receive those payouts uh, at the end of your season. It really is up to you. So it's a very easy to use site and it really is your decision how you use it. And if for some reason your campus doesn't allow the use of Stripe, then you're also welcome to use athletic.net's Stripe account and then we would simply cut you a check at the end of your season or at the end of your meet. Um, and there is a small fee attached to doing that to cover our bookkeeping expenses, but that is an option to you. So we just want you to know that you have all kinds of options in that arena. So getting into the entries process itself, um, this is a quick view of a coach's view of the settings or the back end of your meet page. And I wanted to just draw your attention to a number of different tools that I feel that you will find very helpful in the ecosystem of athletic.net. And one of the most important parts, in my opinion, as a meet director is how you communicate with your audience. So if we glance at the participants tab here, you can see that everybody in the meet is listed at one glance on the participants tab including, if you would like, your timer. Timers are, have the option of having an event manager account on athletic.net. You can then add them to the meet without having to share any of your password or login information with them, and then they can gain access to your entries on their own. In addition, we have a very robust email system within our communication system. It functions very much like a Word document. You can put together any message or any templated message, including upload and then attach attachments if you would like. And once you have done so, you can send that out to anybody on this participants tab, which would be any team attending your meet, or if you're uh, allowing unattached athletes, that would be then towards those individual athletes. In addition, we have an invite participants option where you can use that tool to pull or I should say send invitations out to anybody who may not already be within your meet system. It really is up to you how you manage those meet invitations. So talking now a bit about the actual entry process and what that view might look like to a coach, we offer two different elements of submitting entries for coaches and I should add that it is very collaborative and by that I mean that more than one coach may have access to submitting registration for their team. So anybody listed within a team's account that is a coach has the option to submit entries on that registration page. So if you had a pros coach that wanted to submit their entries, a sprints coach could submit theirs. So it can be done in sections and work in collaboration. Once the, as those entries are submitted, it can be done two ways. So you can see that we have all of the mail options here. I'm gonna pick on the 60 meter dash. And when I do so, every athlete within this particular team then there will be a drop out, drop down, I should say, and the coach may then select any of these athletes for that event. Alternatively, it can also be done by athletes. So if I pick on Trevor here, you can see that his coach has already registered him for the 400 and the 4x4 relay. I wanted to show you this view to point out as well that if overrides are allowed in your meet, then we do have a section where there you, uh, the coach may leave a message or a note for the meet director. And so then instead of sending emails back and forth, that messaging system is contained within the entry screen. And I can show you a bit what that might look like then to the meet director or yourself. If we pop over to the entries tab, and you might note, by the way, that this is a bit of a continuum. If you make your way left to right across our tabs here, this is sort of the process through which you would go through to host an event. So we already talked about participants. When you move into entries, this would be where you would manage your entries. Once we go through the rest of that process, Run Meet, which is our meet management software, would be your next click. And so it really is that simple to flow right from entries into meet management. So if we look at this entries tab, just to highlight a little bit about what I was talking about, we can see that that note that was left on an entry is immediately reflected on the entries tab for you, the meet director, to take note of. So again, no need for email exchange if an entry note is needed. Now what's really exciting about this view as well is our entry management process. So if you were running an invite where you wanted to accept only a certain number of entries based on their seeds, you can see here that the entries listed in green have been accepted. I wanted to show you a feature where if this meet director was to choose to not only accept the entry, but they wanted to notify that coach that the entry had been accepted, with just one simple click, 
they, this particular meet director can accept and notify that coach with a pre-configured entry notification that would immediately be sent in the form of an email to that coach. So again, no need for additional emails back and forth that's taken care of within our entry management system. So now that you've thought a little bit about how you would manage your entries, let's think a little bit about how you would actually run the meet in your meet management software. And that is where Athletic Run Meet comes in. I won't spend too much time talking about that because Ben is gonna go into that a little more in depth. Uh, but it really is just a quick away on your management, management page. It's a very easy feature for you to use. So once Ben gets to that, it'll be a lot of fun for you to hear about that. And then of course we could flow into Athletic Live and the live results that could then dovetail very nicely with Run Meet. Uh, and again, that's something that Ben will highlight. If we move over to this last tab, this is our championship advancement system. Uh, whether or not this applies to your scenario, if you happen to be in charge of a championship series, I wanted you to just be aware that we have an amazing championship qualifier advancement process. We have an excellent help doc that would walk you through how that works and what those options might be for you. And again, we have our support system uh, to help you learn how to use the championship advancer process if that's something that you're interested in. Um, for example, it has been used for the National Junior Olympic Championship Series. Um, that's a very large and robust series with over 900 clubs and 1,400 unattached athletes that have made their way into the National Junior Olympic Track and Field Meet. Uh, and that was really drawn from over 70 meets over the process of the Junior Olympic Series. And so my point to you is that it can handle a very robust championship series and move those qualifiers with the qualifier advancement formula that you choose to use. So lastly, now that we've thought about making our way through the meets and collecting that data, uh, the most important element, I would imagine, for you is rankings. So we have a dedicated collegiate track and field rankings page here. I'm going to pick a little bit on Division I to show you a bit how this works. Now keep in mind, if you use Athletic Live for your live results, these rankings are being changed in real time. So really, as soon as the finalized results happen within a meet for that given event and are uploaded into the meet management software, the rankings are changing instantaneously. So you can imagine if you're watching from near or from afar, those rankings are updated literally in front of your eyes on athletic.net. And so I just wanted to give you a quick view of where you might find that and how the rankings work with athletic.net. Lastly, and not least, oh, and I actually should mention, and this is a really exciting development, to come next month, we will have real-time rankings and they will be converted. So if you are running in an indoor scenario or you need you have marks that need to be converted, that'll be done automatically on athletic.net starting in January. So talking about results a bit, uh, one of the smoothest ways to get your results from your meet management software into athletic.net is to use the athletic.net suite. But if you choose not to, or you're sticking with the system that you're currently accustomed to while you think a little bit about the process, then uploading college results to athletic.net is very simple. We have a help document that will walk you through that, and I encourage you to look through that, because that is one of the requirements of US TFCCCA, is that you do upload all of your uh, meet results to athletic.net so that those rankings remain accurate. So really that, is, that concludes what I wanted to share with you about athletic.net, but again, most importantly, in my opinion, is to show you that our support system is very robust. We are waiting for you to offer you the support that you need. And so once again, I would encourage you to make note of our support email, and that is college at athletic.net. Really the philosophy all, with all of us at Athletic is that we want to grow and learn with you and from you. And now that we're new in the college arena, we would encourage you to let, reach out and let us know what you would like to see, what you would like to change, how you would like us to evolve, because it is the information from you that helps us grow. And with that, I will hand it on to Ben. And I do know we have time for questions at the end, and we will welcome your question. Thank you. Get yours pulled up. Thank you, Kim. Of course. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about RunMeet. So RunMeet is our cloud-based meet management system. And I'm just going to show you a few of the things that make RunMeet sparkle today. Um, if you've ever worked with a meat management system like HiTech or Meat Pro, um, you've gone through the process of seeding, you know how to export results. So we're going to look at some of the things that make this special. So uh, back to the demo meet that uh, Kim was talking about here. Um, this meet, at the moment, it has entries. 
Um, and run meet does work best when entries are done in athletic. Um, just the whole concept of this suite all working well together. Um, as you, and you, you could also get access to the host of those entry management tools that Kim mentioned. Um, but of course, it, it can be done uh, with other entries as well. So if you've ever exported entries and imported them into a meet management system, um, it, it can accept that as well. So right now, we've got our entries uh, in this meet, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the meet. So I hit the Start Now button, and it's gonna take a minute or two to sync everything into the system. Um, RunMeet already has a, a number of college-specific settings, uh, specifically on the seating side, and we'll be working hard this year to improve those. I uh, also should mention that RunMeet uh, has been alive since 2021, and it's been used for over 11,000 high school track and field and cross-country meets, as well as 6,000 in the last year. So it's really, uh, it may only be three years old, but it's had a lot of meets to kind of work through um, how the process works, I work out all those little bugs that come from software that's new. Um, it's, just, it's been used by meets of all different sizes. So we feel really comfortable that it's gonna uh, work really well for the collegiate arena. And there will be some settings we've not encountered yet. We wanna hear those and we wanna get those into the system. So once our entries have been brought into run meets, uh, there's gonna be a number of questions that get asked of us. So uh, track settings, field settings, I'm not gonna go into all of these, but uh, things that you would expect. Uh, lane preferences, how many lanes uh, is my track in, in the oval and the straight? Um, if I go to field, do I wanna do worst to best? Do I wanna do random? Uh, is it metric or English? Of course, always metric here. Um, and scoring, is the meet scoring? Obviously, a lot of these indoor meets coming up, not scoring, but uh, it can score divisions differently, um, and you can set any of the uh, points that you need and uh, set competitor numbers. We always recommend doing this because if you're using the entire athletic suite, uh, you've got multiple different programs that are working at any point and that competitor number helps us tie all of those together. So I'll say yes. And seating, uh, there's options for auto reseating and breakpoints and we'll take a look at, take a, a look at that just a little, in just a little bit. I'll hit the done button here. And as I hit that button, the meat is now initializing and it's going through and seeding everything. So once you've hit that button, you technically could start this meet right now, um, but obviously there's always little things to do before that happens. So once this meet initializes here, uh, we are now in run meet. I just wanna set the scene for what we have here. So um, we have, this is, kind of, this is how we navigate through run meet. So we have seeding and results. We wanna see track versus field, um, be able to sort by session, by division, by event, and then all of the events that match these filters. Uh, and so in this case, we're looking at all track events. Um, they appear here below. And um, just a couple things before we dive in a little bit here into some of these specific settings. One of the really nice things about it being a cloud meet management system is that you don't need to worry about any kind of networking. You know, there's no local networking. You can have as many computers working on RunMeet as you want. So you could have three computers at the, timing, uh, at the timing booth. You could have two people down at the start line clerking and putting people in events. And as all those computers are changing, as all the, the, the data is changing in those different computers, it's all getting up to the cloud and all being synced down to your timing computer. So someone, there's a clerk down at the line putting people in. Um, if you're opening, if you've got finish links and, or, or any FAT system and you're loading that start list, uh, that's updating automatically. So that's the, the real benefit of the cloud. Um, and it can be used on a phone or a tablet. So that person that's down at the clerk, they're not, they're not pulling a laptop down there. They've got an iPad and they're moving things around. Um, so it's uh, completely responsive, works on any screen size. So let's take a look at the, some of the features I really like uh, about RunMe here. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, women's 60 meter hurdles. Uh, and I can set advancement criteria, and as I do that, RunMe will update and let me know immediately how many athletes advance to finals. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I set advancements, uh, make a mistake, this makes that a lot easier. So I know that 10 athletes advance to finals, well wait a second, I've really only got eight lanes, let's just make that top one per heat, or I can take the next best eight times and it lets me know how many people are coming to finals. There's a lot of seating options per event. So as we were moving through the settings when Run Meet started, uh, that was for every single event. But let's say that I want to um, 
maybe for my hurdles, I've only got seven lanes. So I can come down here and say, I want to seed in lanes two through eight and hit close and reseed. And then uh, right here on this bar are all of the different heats that are in this event. Uh, there were eight before I did that, and now there are nine. I can move through these and see that lane one's empty. And if I want to, I can also go over to all and see all of the people that are seated in this event. It's very easy to add athletes to an event. All you have to do is find an empty lane, click a plus button, and then you can say something like, you can start typing a bib number or a name. And once you do that, uh, it will give you options. So in this case, since I'm typing a bib number, I'm hopefully only getting one person. Uh, would not be great to have two 456s in this meet. Um, but if I type a name, uh, it, it, I've got multiple options here. So I'll just go ahead and add this person. And now they are in this race. Um, and uh, I should say, the one thing that's really nice about this is, so I've, I've got all of my heats right here. And I can start dragging and dropping them. So uh, if I want to move this person down into lane six, I can do that. And uh, one of the really cool things I like about this is that you can change the way in which you drag and drop because both of these sort and swap can be very helpful at different times. So we were just on swap. So as I move lane one into lane six, it's swapping them. It's not moving anybody else's lane. But if I change it to sort, I can then, let's say I want to move this person down into lane eight, it's moving lane eight up into lane seven, and so on and so forth there. And let's go ahead and take a look at the women's mile, so just as a distance event. Um, same thing as that 60 meter hurdles, I can view all of, all of the entries here, or I can view by heat. Um, right now, I've got 15 in each. Uh, let's say that I want to add somebody. Um, we'll just type a name here, and okay, it looks like I uh, take Amy. Uh, this heat one right here is letting you know that you're, or you're trying to add this person to uh, an event that they're already in. That's fine, I'll go ahead and click that. And do you want to move them? I guess I do. And uh, let's go ahead, and this person right here doesn't currently have a seed time. I can click on the edit button, uh, add a seed time in for them, and click enter, it's updated. Now, let's say I've done this a few times, and this race hasn't started yet, so I could go ahead and reseed this and get the right people in the right heats. So I could click on this button right here, and that is just going to reseed the events. Um, and let's say that, uh, well, I've got 15 in one heat, and I've got, uh, let's see, six, 15, yeah, 15 in both heats. Um, but I'd really like to maybe have more of an elite heat and then some larger heats below. Um, one way to do that is, or the, really the best way to do that, uh, we can go to our settings, and this gets us into all the settings that we set up when run we started. So you have the option to change any of those settings that you initially started with. And I can go to seating. And let's say I want to turn breakpoints on for waterfall. And click back to our event list. And Click on the three dot button here to get to my settings. And I can say close and reseed. And it's going to give me an option to select breakpoint. So I can say I want to have my top eight people in the first heat. Uh, it lets me know that currently I've got heat sizes of eight and 22. And then I can go down here. I've got eight, 10, and 12. Let's do eight, 11, and 11. Um, just makes it really easy to customize the kind of heat size that you want. And I'll hit save. And now we have three heats, just as we set with the breakpoints. So we've got our events here. Uh, and this is the seating tab. Um, there is a results tab here. And uh, I would uh, hope that everybody has got an FAT camera and those results are being brought in via FAT. But certainly, if for some reason it's a, you've got a small meet and you want to do some hand times, uh, you can enter those here. Um, we're entering results maybe makes a little more sense for some meets would be on the field. So if I go over to field, go over to my long jump, and you're not using athletic field or field links to automatically sync your marks into the meet management system, click on field series right here. And then you can start typing your field series in off the sheet you receive from the official. So 560 uh, confirms for me that it's 5.60 meters. Um, I type 50.1, well, it's gonna 
let me know that that is not a valid mark. So let's just go, let's say 256. And as I'm typing these, the best column on the right there is updating automatically. And when I hit done, the final mark will be put into this mark column and all the field series will be stored and those will be uploaded to wherever they need to get uploaded to, um, be it uh, TFERS afterwards, be it Athletic Live during the meet, or on a printout that you have. And uh, RunMeet does have a lot of reports, so pretty much everything that you would expect and want in a meet management system in terms of reports, uh, they do exist. I'll say this is, we've probably done two rounds of major development on this and I expect a couple more just because the wealth of information that's available in a meat management system and um, any printing requirements that you may have, um, we wanna make sure that we offer that to you. Uh, and while printing is possible, uh, we would also, um, this leads us to the third part of the athletic suite, which is Athletic Live and how results show up in Athletic Live when they're marked final in run meets and also in real time as they're brought from your FAT and field results management systems. So to create a Athletic Live meet from run meet, you click on the Athletic Live logo and you have the option to create your meet. And I will go ahead, we will not go through that process. And let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the features that Athletic Live has to offer. So you've done your entries and registration on Athletic. You've got your meet set up in Run Meet. It's the day of the meet. So what's next? We have four different apps to make the meet day process as amazing as possible. Athletic Live is our live results service. Uh, Athletic Field is our iOS and Android field app that allows for easy entry uh, at the actual field events. And then as marks are being entered or received from a total station, those are getting online mark by mark. We have Athletic SB, which is our scoreboard software, so it's really easy to create displays with your branding on them at any screen size. And uh, Athletic Awards, which is our awards management system. So I just wanna take a look, uh, once again, not go over the whole thing, but just take a look at a few of the features that really make uh, Athletic Live awesome. Real-time rankings. So because all results are now being, all college results are now being uploaded to Athletic, we have the capability to show real-time rankings in Athletic Live. And if you scan this QR code, this will bring you to the, uh, the image that you see on your left and uh, of uh, the 2023 Spokane Indoor Invitational that happened last weekend. Uh, and this is a screenshot of the triple jump as this first place person, Jasmine Scott, uh, jumped 11.98 meters that referenced the athletic.net database and saw that that is a number 30 mark for D1 at that particular moment. And the system ensures that it's giving the right ranking for the right person based on their team. So it knows who's D1, who's NAIA, who's NJCAA, um, and an outdoor who's NJCAA D1 or three. On the, uh, the, right, hand, uh, the right hand side, um, you have the women's 800 meter run, and this is from a meet that was done last weekend uh, using run meet and finish links for their live track results. And once that first place person got that 224.72, it looked to see that that's a D2 number 24. And these are happening all in real time. And same with the PR right there and the season best right here. It knows that who this person is and what their PR is, and it lets you know that right away. So these are happening in real time. Oh, that is not updating the athletic net performance list because we want results to be final before it actually touches that performance list. So once the timer uploads the final results for this triple jump or this 800 meter run, that's gonna update the athletic net performance list and uh, the final results will reflect the rankings at that moment. So it's possible if there's 10 meets going on at once, uh, she might get that mark uh, at two o'clock and it's number 30. Uh, but a few other meets have uploaded their triple jump and the final results would then show that she's that D1 number 35. So it's really, it's trying to make sure that at that particular moment, the ranking is correct. Athletic Field is our field results management software. Um, it's fully featured on iOS and Android, meaning that uh, it also integrates with uh, jump lasers and total stations and soon to be wind gauges, our windows and web apps. Uh, don't quite do that yet, but you could do everything else. So um, if the goal is to have someone go to the field event and start typing in marks, 
any of those four platforms will work. If you scan the QR code or go to live.tf slash field, uh, it's gonna bring you to a page that's got about a five minute video that just goes over the entire app, uh, shows you how it works from start to finish. Probably the best thing about this is that it can work online over the internet. So there's no need to set up any kind of local network. You can get to your meets, find some volunteers, maybe some kids that don't have much to do that day. Um, they can pull their phone out or you can give them a tablet, give them a six digit code, and they can go shadow an official and start typing those marks in and allowing those marks to appear on the live results. Uh, and like I said, this also works with total stations, so those can be plugged in and instead of them having to type the mark, a button can be pressed in the app that receives the mark from the total station. This also works over a local network, so if you're used to that setup or you have a local network, it uh, works fine. Um, it's fully featured both ways, whether it's online or local. Uh, and I should say, um, while the most common way is to have volunteers do this, there are a number of officials that use this as their primary entry system as well. Race videos. Uh, if you scan this QR code, it's gonna bring you to this Men's 800 on the 2023 Oregon Twilight and show you how race videos are displayed on Athletic Live. Within the Athletic Field app, there would be a list of your start list that re that's received from your meet manage management system, whether it's run meet or something else. And the person that is videoing on their iPad or their phone is simply clicking each event, they're recording the race, and they're uploading it. And if the internet is decent, it'll be online in just a few minutes, unless it's a 10K, and that one's always a little troublesome. But um, if you're gonna do that, you gotta have some hardline internet. <laughs> um, on the right hand side here um, is a list of results and at the top uh, it's listing all of the heats so if you know what heat your athlete's in simply click on that and you can see the results or if you click on a result it'll open up a, uh, a summary for that athlete where you can click on the video and start watching it see their splits see their finish line image from uh, that's automatically generated for finish links if it exists um, and you can do this for anybody. And any result you click on Athletic Live, there's a video, we'll show that. Uh, there's also the opportunity to make revenue on these videos, I won't go too deep into that, but if the videos do go behind Athletic Plus, which is our subscription service, um, you can receive $4 per video. Um, so if you think you have 100 heats that day and the race videos are uploaded within an hour, that's $400 for your program. Uh, and there are other ways to allow these videos to be seen for free. And if you scan this QR code, this is an example of a meet where the videos are free to view. Athletic Field also allows field videos to be taken. So you have that volunteer who's down at the field event and they are kind of just standing there waiting for a mark. They can hit a record button, record the athlete as they're uh, going through their jump or um, going through their throw and Hit, uh, hit save that video, type the mark in, save the mark, and within a minute or two, that video is going to appear on the live scoreboard. So if you're looking at the live scoreboard, there's gonna be a little video icon that appears. You can click on that and actually watch the video of the attempt that happened just a minute or two ago. These two examples are for a shot put and a pole vault. Uh, all the attempts here have videos, so you could click on each one of these attempts and be able to view the video for that attempt. Uh, and same here with the pole vault, click on each one of these attempts uh, and see the video as well. If you scan this QR code, it's gonna bring you to this shot put gentleman right here, mess and reel, and you can go take a look at how those field videos look for yourself. Sure. Sure, great question. So a little more detail on how this works. So works on iOS and Android. So we all take videos all the time and upload them to any particular place. It's just within the field app. You can record a video. And because I know that I'm on uh, Massim's uh, second attempt, I'm recording the video, hitting save, and it's automatically uploading. So we have that metadata that, that is able to, that, uh, that tells us what that video is. And that's what allows us to put it in the right place on the live results. No, this is all one device. So there's one person there that's doing all of this. Um, it may be possible in the future to have 
one person that's taking videos, one person that's doing results. Um, it's, something, it's something that we've considered and we've, I think that's a great thing to think about and see if that's something we can do in the future. Thanks for your question. Athletic SB is our physical scoreboard display software. There are six different templates and all of these work via online data or locally. Um, so if you're already sending data to Athletic Live, um, it's just a matter of creating a board, setting some colors, setting some sizes, and you're good to go. Uh, the really nice thing about this is that um, these templates are made for you. There's no need to, you know, you're not creating this by putting a field right here and putting a field right here. We've, just through our, through our research, we've been talking to people and experience, found that these six particular templates work very well, and I'm sure we'll add more in the future. Um, but if you get to a meet or you have a scoreboard and don't currently have anything up there, it's just a matter of uh, plugging a computer in and figuring out what size you need, making that size, changing some colors, and the data will appear as it's sent to Athletic Live. Uh, just as an example, this live track standings board, that's data that's already in finish links or your FAT system. So as you're making marks in there, it's updating automatically, no need for any kind of local connection for that. Um, and this compiled standings right here, this is uh, what's happening in the event right now. So if we're on heat five of 10 of a 100 meter dash, that compiled standings is showing what the standings are uh, through uh, from heats one through four. And our awards app, uh, this is the last of those uh, sort of companion apps to Athletic Live. You scan that QR code, it's going to bring you to uh, the meet that happened last weekend and you can click and play in here. Um, as final results are uploaded, uh, the event appears here for a person to click and when they click it, they get to the list of people that got awards and folks can come up to the awards management person and they can say that I'm so-and-so and I got first, the awards management volunteer clicks it, and they can mark who picked it up. This can be done by event or by team, so if, you're, if you have a meet where people are coming to pick up their awards during the meet, uh, they can do that one by one, or a coach can come at the end of the meet and say, can I have all my awards? And then you can go to a page that's got the entire team and click those awards off one by one. We do offer enterprise sites to any timing company or school who does their own timing, uh, and those are free. So these are two examples right here of two, uh, two colleges, uh, Bucknell University in, in Pennsylvania and Christopher Newport University in Virginia. And the nice thing about this is that you get your logo and your colors on every single page, it helps brand it to your meet, to your school, um, and you get your own domain name. So uh, it can be anything you want. Um, we have found that uh, trying to put live dot on front of a school domain uh, it's usually a little more bureaucracy than anyone wants to deal with. So we do offer an anet.live domain and you can have any subdomain that you want. And that's the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, once again, please feel free to uh, you can scan that QR code and submit them to us. Or we're happy to take some questions now. It looks like we got about 15 minutes left. Or you can email us at uh, support or college at athletic.net. Any questions? Yes. Thanks. Thanks for your question. So um, uh, she's asking about is it possible for Athletic to keep records for individual institutions and have lists, uh, things like that. Uh, Athletic.net does do that. Uh, right now it does require that the results for a particular meet get uploaded. Um, so it's not as simple as saying that the school record is this. And part of that is because Athletic.net is tracking, it's got teams and it's got athletes. We want those team and athlete profiles to be full. 
And for that to happen, we want the actual meet results. There's just a record that's not really attached to a team or an athlete. It's just not a place we've gone yet. We feel like having the results for the meet are important. So um, if, I guess that'd be something, something we have happy to investigate and look at. You've got a bunch of records that aren't really attached to a meet. Um, we can talk more about that and see if that's the place you want to go. But at the moment, it would be, yeah, if you've got results for the last 20 years, they can be uploaded to Athletic, and those record pages will be automatically updated for you. Thanks for your question. Uh, yes, the slide that we had where you had the different things happening with uh, real time, yeah. so you're saying that would go, like we have the electronic video board? Mm -hmm. So that would go up on the electronic video board, or is that what, you know, apparently in California or in Pittsburgh? That's what they're seeing on their phone or Great question. So, question is, who actually sees this and where they see it? This is meant for in-stadium physical display boards. So, yes, your electronics board, and it'd be a question of, as long as you've got the connection to that, then you use this software to decide which one of these you want to show, um, set the size, set the colors, and it just displays on that board. Do you that for many years? Challenging, yeah. to say the least. Um, hoping this would be a little bit easier. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, yes, yep, that, that is our hope. And again, as long as there's a computer and part of that screen can be brought over to the board via no start control or something like that, that's exactly what this is. Thanks for your question. Yes, sir. That's a great question. So at the moment, you don't need to upload any rosters to Athletic because Tapers is still the primary source for that. But whenever results are uploaded to Athletic, your roster is being populated, and the meet you're going to or your meet is doing registration on Athletic, there's a process that receives the, where, where the meet director can get those rosters out of Direct Athletics and upload them to Athletic.net. So at the moment, it's not something that you need to do whenever you have to interact with the system that's going to update for you automatically. In the future, that may change, but that's how it works right now. Yes, right. That's how everything gets submitted back to, that's how, yes, the, the, the single meet Tepers IDs are tracked and brought back to the Tepers. Thanks for your question. Yes, sir. Yeah, so there's a process. Well, so at the moment, because results are being uploaded to Athletic, Athletic has its own database this morning. And there's a database going back to at least 2020 at the moment. Uh, we hope to go back further. But at this point, pretty much all PRs for most people are going to be in the system. So if the meet is requiring personal records, we have that. If it's requiring season records, we have that because the results are already in the Athletic system. Yes. Yep, so when you're making entries, um, there's an opportunity to just simply say you want to use the, and it's going to know too. So if it's personal records, you're going to click a button, it's going to automatically add the personal record for you. If it's season best, then it's going to automatically add the season best for you. Thanks for your question. Yes, sir. At the moment, no, but that's something we've heard throughout this week and something we're really excited to implement. And you're right, I think it's, it's merely a matter of figuring out what those conversions 
users are and deciding on what the right conversion is. Because I know there, there are multiple calculators out there, so we need to decide what's right. And then, yeah, my thought is, because we've got their PRs to see the best, it's a mile, we have a 1500. And I can really even see that being an option for me. Like, do you want to allow conversions? Maybe there's the list of the top 20 conversions. Do you want to allow 55 to 60? Do you want to allow 3K to 2 mile or back and forth? Or do you just want to allow everything? So um, that's something we're very, very interested in for this coming season. Thanks for your question. Well, I want to thank you all very much for attending today. Uh, it's been our pleasure to talk to you about the athletic suite and how to supercharge your meet with it. Um, I hope you all have a good rest of the day and a safe trip back to Central.